Hello, I'm Father Dave McGowan. And I'm Isabel Govry. Welcome to Real to Real. We're coming to you tonight from the Vasey Theater on the campus of Villanova University. And we're here for the second part of the presentation of our special guest, Father Tom Legere, as he discussed our spiritual journey. The response to our first program has been tremendous, and we know that the members of our home audience as well as our live studio audience are anxious to hear the second part of Father Tom's presentation. So without further ado, here's Father Tom Legere. Father Tom, what are we going to be covering tonight? Well, if you recall the last time, we spoke about just the general contours of the spiritual journey. But there are a lot of twists and turns that we didn't deal with yet. We'll be dealing with some of them tonight. And I imagine that will be opening up for our studio audience for questions. Absolutely. Great. Well, don't go away. We're going to be right back with the first part of Tom, Father Tom's presentation. May 2nd, 1986, and you're just beginning the experience of a lifetime on the 1986 Reel to Reel Tour of Europe. Join Father Dave McGowan for a 16-day visit to places you've heard about but thought you'd never see. The mystique of Milan, luxurious Lucerne, bustling Munich, exciting Innsbruck, romantic Venice, the culture of Florence, and of course Rome, including a papal audience. All this and much more is part of the all-inclusive package. For a brochure and more information, call 215-565-7070. The House of Charity can be found at work throughout South Jersey, wherever there is suffering and distress. Through its agencies, compassionate care goes to the elderly. The needy receive food and clothing. Special education programs administer to the mentally handicapped. Expectant mothers receive pre- and postnatal care. And medical services are rendered to the ill. Support the House of Charity in South Jersey. Touch someone's life with love. Greetings in the Lord. If you'll recall, the last time we were speaking about the spiritual journey, we said that it begins with the establishment of a good, strong ego. And the whole purpose of the spiritual journey is to get in touch with the divine spark that is within us all. The point is to get in touch with the kingdom of heaven that is buried in the hearts of each one of us. But to do that, first of all, we all need to undergo some process of conversion. And this is never fun, whether it's a gradual thing or whether it's a sudden thing. It always involves a certain amount of surrender and letting go. In fact, if you're at this point in your spiritual journey, one of the dreams that you might frequently have is of falling and falling and falling through space. Have you ever had that dream? A lot of people have. It means one of two things. It means either you are out of control in your life, or it means you need to get out of control in your life. Now that sounds strange to us Americans who seem to value being in control as one of the supreme values. However, we never get anywhere spiritually until we learn to surrender. Surrender is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. As we do so, it's important for us not to just surrender to life in a general sense, or to surrender to the unconscious, but to surrender to the power of Christ who can lead us to the kingdom within. As we do so, we then begin to start working our way through the various levels of the psyche. One of the first things that we have to get in touch with is the part of ourself that contains all of our past memories, many of which are very painful. You'd be surprised as to how many people have had very traumatic things happen to them in their lives. 
And as we begin to start getting in search of the God within, this level of the psyche begins to start surfacing. And painful memories, memories going all the way back to our childhood sometimes, will begin to manifest themselves. What should our attitude be as we begin to start taking a look at some of the painful things that have happened to us in the past? Very simply, we need to cultivate forgiveness. Without forgiveness, we don't get anywhere. It's like the whole spiritual journey kind of stalls out. If we decide that there are one or two people in our lives that we simply cannot forgive. Forgiving people does not mean that you agree with what they did. It doesn't mean that you weren't hurt because there's a good chance that you were. We've all had our share of those things. But it means that ultimately one needs to surrender to God. God is the one who gives us the power to forgive. By ourselves, we can't do it. But with the Lord's help, we can. You know, I've been very fortunate in my life, and there haven't been too many people who have wished harm of me, although there have been a couple. And I'll tell you what I try to do every day is I try to pray for those people. I try to, in a sense, visualize myself just laying my hands on their heads and sending them unconditional love. I do that for two reasons. One, they need to be set free. But in a sense, just as equally important, I need to be set free too. And I've learned that if you hold on to things too long, they eventually begin to turn against you. If you hold on to bitter memories, then you become a bitter person. And so if for no one's sake except our own, we need to learn to forgive absolutely and unconditionally. And with the power of God, it is possible. I've seen it happen. People say, I can't forgive. What that person did to me is unforgivable. There's no such thing. We can learn to forgive anyone, anything that they may have done against us. As we begin to travel deeper within the psyche, we also have to learn to get in touch with some of the primitive instincts that perhaps we have been out of touch with about ourselves. Specifically, we need to get in touch with anger. Anger in itself is not a bad thing. But a lot of us have been led to believe that nice people don't get angry. And so consequently, what we do is we suppress a lot of angry feelings. And of course, they have to go somewhere. So what happens to them? They get bottled up inside ourselves. And the pressure builds, and the pressure builds. And eventually, as we begin to get in touch with the God within, some of these things begin to manifest themselves. People will start getting angry, and they themselves don't quite understand why. The situation doesn't seem to warrant it, but yet they're feeling all of these hostile feelings coming to the surface. At a time like that, I tell people, just try to be patient and trust the process. It's almost as if you have steam building up in a bottle. You just have to let the steam blow off, and eventually things will calm down in your life. I know one person, a beautiful person, who was undergoing this stage of the journey, who actually had feelings of hostility towards people that had done nothing at all against him. In fact, he wanted to push people downstairs. And he wanted to just go start fights with people. And of course, he came to me and he said, am I losing my mind? And luckily, I had been through a lot of this stuff myself, so I was able to tell the man, I don't think so. You're not losing your mind. It is simply a part of the process. It's a part of the journey. You know, a lot of us would like to somehow skip over <laughs> some of this painful stuff. Isn't there a way that we could have instant enlightenment? Couldn't we take a weekend crash course somewhere and just tap into the power of God without having to deal with all this messy stuff along the way? Apparently not. Because the purpose of the journey is not to become perfect. The purpose of the journey 
is to become real. And that means embracing our wholeness and learning to forgive ourselves. Well, there is a lot more, I hate to tell you, that we need to face on our journey within. And we will be dealing with that very shortly. But first, I know that Father Dave and Bell have a word for us. Thanks, Father Tom. If you'd like a transcript of tonight's presentation, or if you would be interested in tickets for future performances, please write to Real to Real, 222 North 17th Street, room 907, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19103. We'll be right back. Stage comes right out into the audience. There's not a bad seat in the house. The acting is top notch. The scenery is creative. The atmosphere is always exciting. It's really beautifully done. It's directed well. It's very flexible. It's creative. It's really great. They're very professional, extremely. There's a chemistry there that makes it enjoyable to attend the theater. An experience you'll talk about. Villanova Theater. For information, call 645-7474. We were saying that we need to get in touch with repressed anger. Another thing that begins to rear its ugly head has to do with a lot of repressed sexual urges that people have. And strangely enough, as people begin to become more spiritual, some of that stuff begins to manifest too. And people say, gee, I can't understand what's happening to me. I'm in prayer and I have these sexual fantasies. Am I some sort of a pervert or what? Well, apparently it just goes with the territory. If we are going to become whole, then we need to face every aspect of ourselves. And that can be the sort of thing that really scares us. See, it's easy to understand why people stay on the surface of life, isn't it? It's easy to see why people settle for certitudes and pat answers rather than take a journey because this is tough stuff. It's dealing with a lot of things inside ourselves that we find it very difficult to deal with. And I'll tell you, there's another thing that we have to deal with on the journey within, and that has to do with our shadow. This was a term that Carl Jung used to refer to the flip side of the public way we perceive ourselves to be. And so if on the level of ego, consciously, we try to be good and decent, loving, caring people, there is a flip side to all of us, a part of ourselves that is irresponsible and petty and destructive. Now, of course, as we journey within, we need to try to work on all those things and to change whatever needs to change, whatever we can change. But I've also found out something the hard way, I guess, by personal experience. And that is that each one of us has an Achilles heel. Each person seems to have some weakness in their life that they can't really overcome. And so what do you do with that? You're given two alternatives. Either you can hate yourself and reject yourself, or you can learn to forgive yourself. That's tough we find it a lot easier to forgive other people than we do ourselves, don't we? But the journey is never complete until we learn to embrace our shadow. Now, if we are dealing with this part of ourselves on the spiritual journey, the dream that we will have will be the so-called nightmare dreams. And I'm sure every one of us can relate to them. The nightmares involve some kind of a creature Count Dracula or some monster that's chasing us and we're running away and we feel our legs getting heavier and heavier. Sound familiar? But we usually wake up before this creature gets us. Why? Because the point is not that we're going to get caught. The point is there is a part of ourselves that is pursuing us. Because this evil creature is really just a projection a fantasy, a creation of our own mind that stands for the broken part of ourselves that we don't think we can accept about ourselves. And so when we can consciously learn to forgive ourselves for being human, 
forgive ourselves for not having it all together, forgive ourselves for not being perfect, then you know what happens to the shadow dream? It disappears. We don't have any more nightmares. As long as we can learn to accept ourselves as we are. A number of years ago, I was speaking about this, and there was a young sister who heard what I had to say, and she wrote a little poem called Hug Your Shadow that I'd like to share with you right now. What's this, an ominous shadow which rears its frightening head and follows me around by day, then waits beside my bed? I don't know where it's come from or what its purpose be. I only know it haunts my life and makes me feel unfree. I've got to face this shadow and find out what it is. I can't ignore its presence. It's there, it stalks, it lives. Now tell me why you bother and follow me around. You're making life a nightmare and running me aground. But when I faced that shadow, I was aghast to see that what I feared to come to know was really only me. That shadow, like a child, rejected and disliked, was only saying, I am you, accept me. It's all right. Now shadow doesn't frighten me, nor at my conscious tug. I looked, I saw, I gave to it a great big friendly hug. Isn't that beautiful? That's what we need to do if we are to be whole. We need to learn to forgive ourselves. You know, in a sense, I think that one of my favorite stories of all time, The Wizard of Oz, is really all about that. Because Dorothy is a symbol of the self in search of something deeper. And she meets a couple of characters along the way, right? She meets the Tin Man, who's all rigid, and the Scarecrow, who doesn't have a backbone, and the Blustery Lion. Well, I think that all three of those things are really aspects of her. And what she does is rather than reject them, which would be the normal reaction, she gives them all unconditional love. And as a result of that, they become her allies. And the scarecrow ends up getting a backbone. And the tin man begins to loosen up. And that ferocious lion turns out to just be an old pussycat after all. I think that our weaknesses, in a sense, are like that. We're so afraid of them. But if we could just learn to accept ourselves, because God has given us the permission to do so, then we can get on with the business of living and loving. When we've done all that, hopefully we get a glimpse of the God within. And just when we're ready then to go out and order our own halo, because we think that we've accomplished something, God says, guess what? It's time to start all over again. So in a sense, really, this isn't the greatest diagram because the journey isn't so much one of a linear one, but rather a circular one. But as somebody told me once, maybe it's like a spiral staircase. You keep going around, but each time you make a little bit of progress. If you have been fortunate enough to have undergone such a journey, you'll realize that everything has been God's grace. You won't have a big head. In fact, the one thing that you will have is a good sense of humor about yourself. You'll be able to laugh, and you'll realize that with all of the contradictions about ourselves, still, God is living inside of us. That's God's practical joke on the universe. That somehow, with it all, we carry the divine within us. Now, hearing all this is one thing, and experiencing it is another. Hopefully, all of the things that we have shared here have helped us at least get a sense of where we are and, most importantly, where we're all going. The important thing is also to remember, love yourself along the way because God loves us exactly as we are. And so I would like to thank all of you for being such a tremendous audience here. It's really been beautiful, and it's been a real joy. We will have time for questions and answers, however. But uh, first of all, I know that Father Dave and Bell have something to say. Thanks, Father Tom. We're happy to recognize in our audience this evening people from all over the Delaware Valley. Represented here are parishioners from Immaculate Conception Parish in Bridgeton, New Jersey, 
St. Agnes Parish in Sellersville, PA, Holy Rosary Parish in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and St. Dorothy Parish in Drexel Hill, PA. And we'll be taking questions from those and other members of our studio audience when we return. So don't go away. At the Donahue Funeral Home, we're always gratified to hear from the families we serve. Over the years, many bereaved families have told us how much they appreciated the warm, home-like atmosphere of the Donahue Funeral Home. To make such moments perhaps a little less difficult, the Donahue Funeral Home suggests that you discuss with us now, in the privacy of your home, pre-arrangement and the financial advantages and peace of mind it brings. That's what living is all about. I was single and pregnant. I wasn't sure who the father was. Everyone seemed worried about quick solutions, but didn't care about me or my child. Then I heard about MAS. They're different. They didn't judge me. They listened. They're professionals, they're free, and they're nearby. If you're single and pregnant, get help. Call MAS. MAS, serving Burlington, Ocean, and Mercer Counties. 609-394-5181. And now we have the opportunity for questions and answers. If you want to ask some question about your own spiritual journey, but yet you don't want us to know who you're talking about, you can say, well, this friend of mine so he has a problem. <laughs> Father, if someone has hurt you in the past and you have forgiven them, but they continue to hurt you in the present, how do you deal with it? There is nothing wrong with anger per se. It's a legitimate emotion. I know that's hard for a lot of us to really believe and internalize. But yet Jesus himself was angry. We saw him overturning the money changers' temp uh, tables, right, in the temple. So it's not really an unspiritual thing to be angry. So if somebody hurts us, I think we need to get in touch with our anger and not deny it because when you deny your anger, you're heading for depression. The classical definition of depression is anger turned against the self. So I think it's important for us to get in touch with our anger. But then, as soon as we've processed it, <laughs> not to hold on to it. There's a big difference between a beautiful person who happens to be temporarily angry, and on the other hand, an angry person. An angry person even begins to look different. They just have it inside themselves that they're mad at the whole world. And that is a self-defeating kind of a attitude. But it's not at all unspiritual to be temporarily angry. So if somebody hurts us and we feel angry, be comfortable with the feeling. Acknowledge it, but then eventually try to let it go. Uh, it's similar an extension to the question that was just asked. What happens when you try to forgive someone, some person in your life, over and over again, and that person does not accept your forgiveness? I'm not talking about a one-time situation. I'm talking about approaching the person over and over again, but yet having that person constantly rebuff the person who's trying to give forgiveness. Okay, well, then that becomes their problem. The only thing that you can do is to forgive the other person. You can't make somebody else forgive you. You can't make someone else like you. The only thing you can do is to be consistent in your attitude towards the other person. Now, to be honest about it, I think if you've tried a number of times personally with somebody and you're not getting anywhere, I think the realistic thing is to kind of just surrender it to the Lord and not keep going back to that person because there's a block there and you're kind of wasting your time and probably just causing a lot of frustration to yourself. So I think that one needs to just keep loving unconditionally. That doesn't mean, however, that you have to go keep knocking on that person's door. But what they do with it then becomes their problem. Father Tom, what can we do when we lose our close feelings about God? What can we do when we lose our close feelings about God? It's important for us to remember that feelings are only feelings. And sometimes you can be very close to God 
but yet feel like God is a million miles away. And that's a really painful thing for people. They're on the spiritual path, and especially in the beginning, there's a honeymoon stage in which they really feel very close to the Lord. They feel like they're walking with the Lord all the time. And then the feeling goes. And then they ask themselves, what did I do wrong? How come I'm living in the desert? I think that's just an invitation from God to us to go beyond feelings and to not base our spirituality on feelings, but rather on a commitment to love. Love is not just a feeling, it's a decision. And I think when that feeling of closeness is taken away, then that really is our big opportunity to continue to believe and to continue to love, even if it feels like we may be going through the desert while we're doing so. You know, this has been fantastic. I, I've enjoyed this so very much. We've got a pretty good handle, I think, on everything that's involved in the spiritual journey. Now all we have to do is go out there and live it. And that's the tough part. But perhaps at least this has exposed all of us to a deeper understanding of getting in touch with the kingdom within, finding that pearl of great price without which life is totally absurd. And so I would like to thank all of you for journeying along with me during this sharing. It has been a beautiful experience, and I thank you from the very depths of my heart. Well, thank you, Father Tom. You've awakened and enlightened us. Thanks, Bill. And we'd like to thank all of you who have shared this program with us at home. Send your comments to us at Reel to Reel, 222 North 17th Street, room 907, Philadelphia, PA, 19103. Or call us during business hours at area code 215-668-9842. Next week on Easter Sunday, we'll have a special show on the Renew programs of Trenton and Camden, New Jersey. Our studio guests will discuss how this popular parish enrichment program has affected parish life. So join us next week. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Travel arrangements for Reel to Reel by Atkinson and Mullen Travel of Media PA. Phone area 215-565-7070. We want you to find out what Catholic Pentecostalism is all about. Hundreds of thousands of copies of the pamphlet, Understanding Charismatic Renewal, have been sold. We would like to send this to you free of charge. We will also send a free 30-day prayer booklet and a list of parishes which sponsor a charismatic prayer group. Just call 215-668-HOPE this week. You will also receive a card for our monthly newsletter.